Welcome to the most controversial video a football YouTuber can make. Guys, Golda's new site is AOEAH.com, so if you want any cheap and reliable coins for Team of the Season to get those blues, where it's 100% safe and reliable with instant delivery, head on over there and don't forget to use Reeve as a discount. I've seen kidnapping pranks that are less controversial than the video I'm about to make, so please take everything I say for the rest of the video as an opinion. Obviously, your opinions might differ. This is my personal prediction of the Premier League table for the season 2017 to 2018. And obviously the reasons for my picks might be completely different for the reasons for your picks, but ultimately this is how I think the 20 Premier League teams are going to finish at the end of the upcoming season. So no messing around, let's get into 20th position. And for me personally, even though they finished higher than Huddersfield and second in the championship, Brighton are my bottom of the table team. In reality, they have made a few signings. The likes of Izzy Brown from Chelsea and obviously Matthew Ryan from Valencia, who's a bit of a FIFA god concerning checklist challenges. And they've also signed Scottish international from Celtic, Josh Kerr as well. I just don't feel like they have what it takes to contend with the Premier League at this moment in time. Now, this isn't to say I think that Brighton are a bad team. It's always tough to see any of the three promoted teams season by season stay up in the Premier League. Unfortunately, somebody has to be in last place and that, for me, is going to be Brighton. And in 19th, we have another championship promoted team in Huddersfield. As I say, it could have gone either way. 19th and 20th for me personally are going to be either Huddersfield and Brighton. That's just a prediction. I should just say, as I've mentioned throughout, these are predictions. But I just think Huddersfield have a bit more desire to prove themselves the playoff promoted club out of the three that came up from the championship. And they have made some pretty decent signings like Jorgensen, Tomins from Derby, who had a pretty impressive season last season, and Aaron Moy from Manchester City. Now, I'm going to be honest here. A lot of people probably haven't seen a lot of the signings that have been made by a lot of these clubs. But when you see players like Jorgensen getting team of the seasons in their respective divisions you obviously expect them to be pretty good so he might settle into the Premier League quite well but sadly I do think Huddersfield will end up going back down don't get me wrong probably a valiant effort throughout the season I just think 19th is at this moment in time an easy enough prediction to make 18th we've got Swansea even though Fernando Llorente has the best conversion rate from any Premier League striker from 2016 to 2017 of shooting at goal 40 times or more that was a mouthful as well I just don't think Swansea have what it takes to stay up this year they were on the brink of relegation last year as well. I mean, they have picked up players like Tammy Abraham who had a ridiculously good summer for international football. But ultimately, I just don't think they've bought as well as other teams around them in that sort of just above relegation zone compared to last season. And so Swansea City is going to be completing my trio of teams to go down next year to the championship. Now, this next ranking is a little interesting because I have put Burnley in here. They might end up doing quite a bit better, but I just cannot look beyond them getting rid of Michael Keane along with Heaton, kept them in a majority of games throughout last season. It's a massive loss for Burnley. I mean, they did sign a Stoke during Phil Bardsley and Jonathan Waters. Is that enough to really push on for a mid-table finish like Burnley could have done at the end of last season? I don't really think so. Even though I have a few friends who will dislike where I've put them, I think 17th for Burnley, in my personal opinion, where they are going to finish. Now, 16th is a talking point because it does mean that Newcastle United will have stayed in the Premier League for a season. They're a Premier League team. Let's not forget this. Newcastle United are a Premier League club. And I have no doubts that Rafa Benitez is going to keep them in the Premier League. They brought in Manquito from Atletico Madrid and obviously Atsu from Chelsea as well. So they have made some decent purchases. And I just think the whole of the North East, well... Basically, Newcastle are 100% behind their club staying in the Premier League, which is what I think Rafa Benitez is going to do. Not impressively, not like a mid-table finish, but comfortably enough so they are in the Premier League for the following season. In 15th place, we have Bournemouth, a comfortable finish to stay in the Premier League for another season. Obviously, they've brought in Begovic like Jermaine Defoe. Nathan Ake is actually permanently signed now to Bournemouth as well. So they've done a great bit of business. Obviously, Jermaine Defoe being the main focal point of that business throughout this summer. And I just think a comfortable lower mid-table finish for Bournemouth is exactly where they're going to finish. Maybe like 14th, 13th, 15th, something like that. Nothing too extraordinary, but 15th place for Bournemouth is where I think they'll finish. In 14th place, we have Watford. They've been kind of busy under the radar this summer as well. They've brought in Nathan Chalobah and obviously Tom Cleverley. Their head coach is now Marco Silva as well. I think Watford will go under the radar a little bit this season, but I can see them staying in the Premier League with a fair amount of ease. 13th, we have Crystal Palace. Who their manager is now Frank De Ball, which is why I think they'll finish a lot higher than 
other people have predicted them to finish. They've also made a quality loan signing in Ruben Loftus-Cheek as well. Pretty quiet in the transfer front throughout this summer, but I think with some of the players that they currently have, 13th is realistic finish for Crystal Palace. Obviously, it's realistic. I mean, that's the whole point of why I'm doing these. These are my predictions. This is where I realistically think people will finish. But yeah, Crystal Palace 13th. In 12th place, we have West Brom, the first of the two Wests in the Premier League. Also pretty quiet throughout this transfer market so far. Their main signing obviously being Jay Rodriguez from Southampton. But the football that Tony Pulis has got them playing is quite impressive. He's really got control of that team now and they, they seem to be settling down and making mid-table finishes year after year. So I'm confident enough that they'll be exactly in that area again this year. The top end of the table just seems too strong for them to push anywhere beyond like 9th or 10th. 11th, 10th, won't be too bad for them. It won't be too bad. In 11th, can they do it on a cold, wet, rainy Tuesday night in Stoke City? Yeah, Stoke City in 11. Now, before doing this video, I had to do an actual little bit of research, and I found out, I didn't even know this, that Kurt Zuma is actually going on loan to Stoke, which is a very good signing for them. However, they have got rid of their main man in Marco Arnautovic. The guy that produced magic last season for them is actually going to West Ham. Stoke seems to have got rid of a lot more players than they managed to bring in. But they've also drafted in Darren Fletcher, so they are improving the spine of the team. I just think with Stoke being Stoke, you can never really properly predict how their season is going to go. The most reasonable prediction for me to make was around mid-table, and I think 11th for Stoke isn't unlikely. They could finish higher, they could finish lower. It's just... It depends on how Stoke play really, doesn't it? In 10th, going from one red and white stripe kit to another, we have Southampton. Always seem to be there or thereabouts. At least the mid-table finish, maybe higher. They get rid of so many players, but they still continue to perform year after year and come out with some decent finishes. And of course, they have a brand new manager this season as well in Maurizio Pellegrino. As is the Southampton way, they have got rid of so many more players than they have brought in, but somehow I can still see them getting results and playing solid football again. Now in ninth place, another team that could finish any in any number of places, much like Stoke, is the 2016 champions of the Premier League, Leicester City. Obviously, they were clawing onto the finish that they had last season. They sat Ranieri got in Craig Shakespeare. He seems to be steadying the ship a little, but I don't think they'll reach the heights of champions or around the top four. I just think another slow, steady, solid mid-table finish again for Leicester. They brought in Ekopovic from Holland, obviously a Bora from Sevilla, their two most notable transfers that they made. And they haven't really got rid of anyone that's actually that impactful in the Leicester squad. So they've kept the squad the same pretty much, but just made improvements as well. So I think a ninth place finish for Leicester is a pretty reasonable one. Business end of the Premier League now, guys. And the second of the two Wests in the Prem is, of course, West Ham. Now, these have been ridiculously busy during this summer. Obviously, the main transfer... Actually, I was going to say main transfer, but they've made so many, it's actually quite impressive. Joe Hart, Pablo Zabaleta, Marco Arnautovic, and obviously Chicharito Hernandez. Four massive signings for West Ham. Like any club, they've sent players out on loan and they've released a few as well, but these are four huge signings that could definitely impact West Ham performances throughout the whole of next season. So I can confidently say I think West Ham will finish eighth or better. Finally getting used to London Stadium as well, it should be said. Moving on to another team that has had a very interesting, busy and exciting summer of transfers. It's Everton. And I'm just looking at the transfers that they've made to the club. We're looking at Jordan Pickford, David Classen, Michael Keane and Wayne Rooney. This, this is a very impressive list. They do have a very good manager in Ronald Koeman as well. So seventh for Everton. Maybe on the borderline of European football as well. It would pay me to see them do this role because obviously I'd never hear the end of it from Andy. But Everton for seven. I'd be happy putting a bit of money on that. Now this is where it gets really serious guys. Obviously from this point onwards, please take what I say with a pinch of salt. It is an opinion and if your team is not where you think it should be, just ignore what I think and just go with your own opinions as well. But these are my predictions. I personally can't be wrong with what I think. So if it's a different opinion to yours, I can only apologize, but it's what I think. Having said that, we're now gonna move into sixth place. And this is the reason why I've given a little bit of a disclaimer. In sixth place, we have Liverpool. The biggest transfer that they've made this summer is of course, Mohamed Salah from Roma. A very good signing it looks like. And at this moment in time, they've managed to keep a lot of their important players as well, like Philippe Coutinho. He has not left yet as I make this video. However, I think other teams around them have just bought better and stronger than Liverpool and I just don't think they'll finish as high as all of their fans seem to think that they will. Yes, they'll make European football. It will be a very tight 
top six race. Of that, I have no doubt. But unfortunately, somebody has to come sixth. And for me, I think that's going to be Liverpool. So forgive me if you're a Liverpool fan, but that's just where I think your team will finish. In fifth place, we have a club that hasn't really been making many moves this transfer window. In fact, they've had no transfers coming in, only transfers of players being sent to other clubs. I am, of course, talking about Tottenham Hotspur. Having said that, the squad that they have continued from last season is enough to challenge for the Premier League. However, as I say, other teams around them and other clubs around them have bought a lot better than Spurs. So I do think other teams will improve around them and Spurs will just drop off the pace a little bit. But as I, I, I've literally just mentioned this, I think the top six will be a very tense and interesting race. But it just so happens that I think Spurs will finish in fifth I have, to, I have to put teams somewhere, guys. You have to understand that. And in fourth place, scraping Champions League football is Manchester United. Yes, they've made some very good signings in Matic, Lukaku and Lindelof. But I don't think they have the firepower this year just yet under Mourinho to actually compete for first place. I think Mourinho's five-year, whatever, three-year plan is still taking shape. And I think it's only going to be in a few years' time when you see the Manchester United of old just completely destroying teams. You have to remember, guys, the Ferguson era isn't just going to magically reappear. It's going to take time at Manchester United for them to build back what they once had. And in third place, we have Arsenal, the team that I support. Now, this isn't just a biased Premier League predictions where I was going to say, oh, Arsenal first and whoever, I don't really care. These are realistic predictions of where I think teams will finish. And if they don't finish there, they don't finish there, but I've given it my best shot and these are where I think they're going to finish. There's an improvement on the season just gone and the reasons why I think there's going to be an improvement is we have a flipping striker now. Alexandra Lacazette is going to do bits. And also another transfer that has gone under the radar. Possibly going to be one of the best left backs in the league. Kolasinac from Schalke is, I think, going to be one of the most underrated transfers of the summer. This guy, if you I don't know if you watched the Emirates Cup, guys, but I did and he looked absolutely incredible. But I don't want to prejudge anything. I've only watched a few games of him. However, these seem like really purposeful signings that Arsenal has made. And now, with a proper striker, a finishing striker, that can get on the end of Sanchez and Ozil's assists, it will make a massive difference. Not only that, but keeping Alexis is absolutely huge for Arsenal Football Club. I don't think we'll get first. I don't think we'll get second. I, I really would love us to win the Premier League this year. Very tough to see past the top two teams. Yes, I know a lot of these teams are going to be challenging for the title. As I say, it, it will be a very intense top six race. I think any team out of the top five or six is capable of winning the Premier League. They'll just have to have really good seasons to do it. In second place, we have last year's champions, Chelsea. Now, this might seem like a very surprising second place, but I think oh, I, it's so hard, man. I don't. Oh, I just don't think Chelsea will win it again. I don't think they'll go back to back. I think Manchester City are going to be too strong for for them. Even though Chelsea have signed Rudiger, Morata and Bakayoko and obviously kept the likes of Kante, Hazard etc. Just the sheer powerhouse of transfers Manchester City have made. I just cannot look past them winning the Premier League. So obviously, as I say, Chelsea in second. Please remember once again I should disclaimer that these are just opinions. Chelsea might win, Arsenal might win, Manchester United might win the Premier League. But for me in my head right now, these are the most realistic places that I think teams will finish. And obviously that means the crowned champions of the 2017 to 2018 Premier League season or of course Manchester City they have made some crazy impressive transfers this window Edison Kyle Walker Danilo Benjamin Mendy and Bernardo Silva five massive transfers yes they've spent a lot of money on them but if they do pull through for them then I cannot look past Manchester City winning the Premier League they didn't win not because of the basis of their squad because the manager hadn't had time to settle into the Premier League now that Pep's had a season under his belt Manchester City are going to be a very difficult team to stop you still got to remember they have the likes of Aguero David Silva in that team it is a majestic squad and on paper 100% the best in-depth squad there is in the Premier League. And on paper, this is how I'm doing my predictions. They should win the Prem. But as I say, these are just opinions. It might not happen. It might happen. It'd be really interesting to see what your Premier League table looks like. So if you can, please write down in the comments because I genuinely am so interested to see what your Premier League predictions are. Please write down in the comments just so we can have a little discussion down there. I am absolutely buzzing for the upcoming season. I hope you guys are as well. If you are, leaving a like on this video would be absolutely awesome. As I say, write your comments down below so we can get a little discussion of the upcoming season 
isn't going, please take what I've said in this video with a pinch of salt. It is lighthearted, it is an opinion, and these are just predictions. In no means or way whatsoever was I trying to flame or belittle or degrade your club if I didn't put them in positions where you think they should have come. I mean, I'm an Arsenal fan, I'll put us third for flip's sake. But if you have watched the whole video, I do really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, as usual. 10,000 likes would be really awesome, and I'll speak to you all again soon. Adios. And I cannot wait for the Premier League.